Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking oil undercoating. The do's, the don'ts, the why you should, the why you shouldn't, what products I use, why I use them, the myths behind it, and basically everything oil undercoating. Let's get into it. Let's face it, there's a lot of products out there that claim to be the best of the best. Permanent solutions, the rubberized undercoating, you name it, I've tried it. And honestly, I've settled on one that I've been pretty happy with and they just happen to be local. With that being said, if, if you were to do like a full frame off or a full, I'm gonna build this vehicle up and you had the vehicle completely stripped down to the frame and you were gonna paint the frame from scratch and, and start over, perfect. No, you're not gonna use like a temporary or a uh, oil undercoating or anything like that. But if you've got a daily driver or anything of the such, and you want to protect it from the elements, and what I mean, if you live in the Rust Belt, you live up here in New England like we do, you deal with harsh winters and road salt, and they literally eat a vehicle to death. Let me show you. All right, we got our parts truck out here, and this truck actually isn't bad at all, the truck itself. I just wanted to kind of show you like some of the stuff that we deal with around here, um, because almost every truck around here rots around the fender wells like this. Um, but what I really wanted to show you, because I don't have a, a crusty, crusty vehicle on the lift to show you, but this came off of one. This is what's left of a Reese hitch. Yeah, that, that was quarter inch steel plate and tubing that literally broke off. Um, I think this was a 2005 or four. So yeah, the rust is real up here. So in order to slow that down, this is what we do. So it's hard for people down south or out west or whoever that don't deal with the rust that we deal with. We, know we I post videos, they post videos. Why are you putting that nasty oil undercoating on there or whatever? Because that is what we decided to use and what we use here is the oil undercoating. Well, the reason why we do is because it slows that rust down and or stops it. Does it make the rust disappear? No. It soaks into the base material and prevents it from getting worse. So if you catch a vehicle on time and you kind of scale it off, it's the perfect opportunity to protect it up here. And it works because I've had case studies where I've done these vehicles a couple years in a row. And when they come back, the first year we scale them down and then we apply the oil undercoating. And the next year, it's still on there. It's covered in dirt, but that oil undercoating is still on that base material. And that matters. What else matters is I use it on my own vehicles so I just gotta tell you something. I apologize, it's not like a super exciting video and there's a lot of me talking, but there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of questions that have come up over the years and some different things that I've learned and I wanted to share with you folks. And if you're on the fence about doing it, it kind of educates you as well and I'll, I'll, we'll go over all that. Thanks for watching and thanks for hanging with us and don't forget to subscribe to Flip and Customize and hit the like button. And this is what we settled on. Um, we use the New Hampshire Oil Undercoating product. Um, this just happens to be their Black Series. They make like a, a straight up like, uh, it's like a brownish caramel colored one. And they also now have a um, rodent eliminator that has like a peppermint oil in it. So we do want to get some of that to try it. Um, I used to use, I'm not picking on another company at all, as far as when we went all the way to the oil undercoating route, um, fluid film. And a lot of people use it, a lot of people still use it. It's not a bad product. However, I could not stand the smell and I found it really thin. This stuff's a little thicker. I didn't find that it's stiction or longevity over time lasted like the New Hampshire oil undercoating. So with that, we switched over to them and we've been using it ever since. It's a great product. I've gotten no complaints with it, despite what some people will say about oil undercoating in general, regardless of the company. All right, and contrary to some people's beliefs, no, it doesn't hurt electrical connectors. It's non-conductive. It provides a basically barrier between the frame of the vehicle or any components, including like fuel or brake lines. If you've got steel lines that typically rust out, which those do too up here, it's gonna protect those. They typically say you apply every 12 months. Now, a lot of that comes into play as to how much you use the vehicle, how often you ride, to be, you drive in the vehicle. There's a lot of factors that come into play for that, but the average is they say do it every year. My rule of thumb is, I mean, if the vehicle is driven on the road all the time, every day, all winter, then yeah, do it every year. But otherwise, do it the first couple of years. And if it's like, I, I go out a couple of times a week in it or whatever in the winter, take a look at it and maybe you can go to every other year after that. But what we're gonna do today, this one here is almost done, is I got a 2000 uh, Jeep Wrangler outside, and I'm gonna take you through the process, the entire process of what we do for the oil undercoating. Um, and it's some things in here that you probably see that you don't see in other shops, 
or maybe you do, and that's a good thing. So I'm almost done with this one. I'm gonna wrap this one up. I'll go through some of the equipment and we'll bring the Jeep in and get started on that. All right, so excuse the mess, but I get it by the five gallon pail. You can get 55 gallon drums. You can buy it, get it by the gallon, however you want, and they will ship across the US. So it's not just like a local product only. Um, it's messy, so be prepared to get yourself messy. You can do this in the driveway, you can do it yourself, you can buy the gun to do it yourself. There's all kinds of different options and stuff like that you can do. I choose to do it in our shop. Ideally, we're gonna set up a lift outside and do it out there, because as you can see, we hang a plastic up here. I run a fan to blow, and I run the door open, the exhaust, and then we have an intake fan to kind of keep it down and keep some of that mess and everything away from the other side of the shop where we do all the powder coating and fabrication. Um, so you don't want that. But in a nutshell, I basically use three tips. And I use, uh, this is the first tip I use. As you can see, it has a hole right in the end. Again, everything's messy. And holes in the side. And I'll show you it in use. But it basically goes into all cracks, crevices, holes, ports, plugs, you name it. We go in it and we can get this in there and we spray it with oil. I do everything with this first. Next, we move to this tip. Looks a lot like the other one, however, it's just got an opening in the end. It's larger and nothing on the sides. This gives you a direct spray. So I'll go through and hold it in my hand, you'll see it in the video, and then I'll control this and really get into angles and areas that you not necessarily could get into, some tight areas and stuff like that, so you can really direct it where you want it. I'll do the whole vehicle in that, and well, everywhere that's applicable to that. And then the final step is what we call the lipstick. That's just a wide spray nozzle. That's a lot like, like painting a vehicle. Um, unfortunately, there are some shops out there that will literally go in there, put your vehicle on the lift, and lipstick it. And yeah, it looks great. They didn't go in any cracks, crevices, any place that really matters, because the lipstick at the end of the day, a lot of the places you put that on doesn't really need it anyway, but it looks really good. And to the average consumer, they could be easily fooled. However, that's the last thing we do. The lipstick is the final, like, dress it up, it's done now. Then we put everything back together, we put the wheels and tires back on, unbag it, and out it goes to the customer. So, we'll get the Jeep in. I'll show you each one of these in use. All right, we're gonna go out and grab the Jeep Wrangler now. Um, and one thing you wanna do, I mean, obviously, with, like with working on any vehicles, you kinda give it a once over, a walk around, look for any damage or things that aren't right, so you can bring it to the customer's attention before you go ahead and touch it. So you always wanna do that. But um, what you'll see too, when we get it up on the lift, is the newness of the frame. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's like, not shiny anymore and it's starting to get some surface rust so this is ideal time to go ahead and get this thing coated all right we got the jeeps inside now and we went ahead and covered it up so i just we have a uh, basically just a big tarp that we put over the top of the vehicle and that helps with some of the overspray from settling back on the uh, horizontal surfaces so it's just something we do that kind of helps keep some of that off um either way we always recommend a customer washes the vehicle after the outside not and obviously you don't uh, blast the bottom, but this is just something we do. So we're gonna go ahead and get it up on the lift and then get the wheels off. All right, kind of nice today. I got actually someone holding the camera beside me. Steve's here. <laughs> wow. All right, take the more. <laughs> Let me get the air one out. A little over torqued <laughs> and because I'm here. So we'll put another X for Fire Steve. Take three, don't over tighten your wheels, people. Alright, and I had to turn the air pressure up so that helped as well. Yeah. But first things first, we take the wheels off. Yeah. Then we're gonna go ahead and bag the rotors to protect the rotors. A lot of shops are not taking the wheels off, and that's fine, but it gives you way more access and ability to get the coating where you need it, including the backing plate of the brake, because the backing plate rots out on almost every vehicle up here in the Northeast. Now keep in mind, we're up here in New England, so things actually rust out. So if you're watching this and you're from the south or west, disregard. We love, we love our salt. Yeah. We got it up on the lift and we got our rotors bagged out so we have full access to everything, including the backing plate uh, on the vehicle as well. So basically the next step is I go around with compressed air and I blow out any voids or any place where dirt could collect. That'll help out. Um, and like what I was saying earlier is, see this frame, this is a 2020. Um, the shiny newness of the, of the paint is now gone and you're starting to get a little bit of surface rust here and there. Nothing serious at all, but this is a great time to go ahead and get this vehicle coated. So I'm just basically gonna blow out all the uh, voids with the compressed air. Um, we also drop the skid plate for better access here. So the skid plate, any, any plates or anything like that, you can take off and get out of your way, go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'll set up and start spraying with our in 
uh, the frame. So in the voids, we'll put that tip on. We're gonna start with all the voids. see I put my sexy outfit on this is what we do with PPE we safety first always a little bit customized <laughs> uh, but anyway we got the in the frame nozzle here and I'll kind of give you a little sample of what it does when you spray it so could you <laughs> did I get the camera I think the lens is you got me I know that yeah so it sprays in all directions so basically something like this you can go into these frame voids and start on the inside and as you're coming out You've got that nice black coating. That's nice. And then rinse and repeat. I go in every hole, every accessible piece I can get into. Same thing. And you just, and you just, you're working yourself down the line in every one of these voids that you can get into. So I'll, I'll do that on all cracks and crevices and voids. And then we'll get into our, our like fine tip where I actually can target different areas. So, cool. you guys saw in the time lapse <laughs> but I actually kinked my hose and it waterfalled out of the top and that's always fun to get soaked in that but to kind of just give you an idea uh, basically what I've done is I've gone in all the voids that we can find on the vehicle as far as holes and everything else areas that are you know harder to access get all those now that are behind there um, anything and everything you can think of you want to get in there because this is the time to do it so including into the body voids and the hitches because those rot out too. So next step, uh, we're gonna actually switch over to our fine tip and I'm gonna go through and then I can kind of just really get in there and drive some fluid around some areas that the overall fan spray won't get to. All right guys, I actually switched to the uh, fine tip now and what we've been doing is working our way from front to back. All the in frame stuff is done now and now we have the fine tip and what that does, I'll kind of show you here, is it just gives a really fine spray. So what's nice about it, and I'll do it here because it's out in the open, but I can really get in here. Are you able to see that? And work, work specific areas and direct this thing exactly where we want it. Where the other shops and some shops will just use the wide spray and cover everything. We're going to get in there and we're going to target our areas with this because we can direct it. And then the final step we do is that fan spray. So I'll go through and finish all the finite stuff and then we'll hit it with the fan. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So now we've done the in the frame and we've done the uh, the fine tip and got in all the cracks and crevices. And at first glance, it could look like this thing is done, but it's not done yet because now we're gonna take what I call the lipstick, the final tip, which is the fan overspray, and you get these big surfaces up here, and then then it's done. Sorry, I'm about to spray it. <laughs> fast coming at you <laughs> oh yeah all right the final spray is done so now we've gone through with the wide fan spray and as you can see everything is now coated like everything body panels the floors the braces because we've gone in we've gone out we've gone around um, anyways, you don't want it. My right. eye. <laughs> Including Steve's eye. You don't really want it in your eye. Because I got it in my eye too. So um, the exhaust, and you're going to get some overspray on the exhaust. So go ahead and go get as much of that off as you can. Um, one other thing to mention is like this passenger has, uh, this customer has some fasteners here. Ideally, it'd be good to replace these with some stainless or something. But instead of spraying it and getting it everywhere, I'll probably go through with a brush and touch these up. And the other thing we're gonna do is pop the hood and see if there's any little areas above the strut towers that we can get to as well. But in a nutshell, that's the overall spraying of the vehicle. All right, and don't forget the uh, skid plates. Get that all buttoned up and we'll get this thing on the ground. I'm gonna get my sexy light off here. And at the end of the day, 
what we're gonna, gonna yeah what i'm gonna do is go ahead and touch up those few bolt heads we're gonna open the hood and touch up those spots and then we're gonna go ahead and put the wheels and tires back on unbag the rotors put this thing on the ground uncover it and get it outside now let's talk about time and smoking and anything else the customer may say. Kind of took you through the process of doing a complete oil undercoating job with uh, a few little t things I got to do still. But all in all, it takes me a couple solid hours. Um, a lot of these other shops, again, not talking bad, but I just want you to be aware. They're not pulling wheels, they're not bagging rotors, they're bringing it in and out and it's usually done in an hour. Um, I question how well you can do in an hour. There's no way I can get it done. Um, so depending on the vehicle, it's two to three hours. Um, so price point anyways between $250 and $300 is what we get. Now an average vehicle like this Jeep is going to take about a gallon and a half of material. Um, it's going to take more material the larger the vehicle, obviously less the smaller. If it's been applied last year, it doesn't take quite as much and it goes a little bit faster. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, big three quarter ton trucks, they're gonna take you more time because they're a lot more work and a lot more product. They're about two gallons. Um, so just be aware of that. And I always ask people as well, well, we have the vehicle in here. We got the wheels and tires off, there's no charge. We'll rotate the tires if they want the tires rotated at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all buttoned up and we'll wrap this up. All right guys, so we got this baby all finished up, took you through all the steps that we do for uh, oil undercoating and the whole process. And the last thing I do is always start it up and let it run for a good 10, 15 minutes outside because a couple of things, it's gonna smoke, you're gonna have some residual on the exhaust. It's, it's unavoidable if you're under there working. Um, so make your customer aware of that or just be aware of that and it's gonna smell. So it's gonna smell for a good week or two. Um, the next thing is uh, just be aware that avoid under car blast car wash for a while personally steve he just cannot get out of this camera <laughs> now personally i don't do an, uh, an under blast the whole winter do this in the fall leave that stuff alone under blast in the spring and then recoat in the fall and you're good to go that's that's typically what we do um and what i recommend but again at least for the first month don't let that oil do what it's going to do let it soak in the areas let it penetrate the rust if you have a rusty vehicle, that's another good thing. It actually makes taking things apart, besides the horrible mess you're covered in blackness, um, it's just gross and dirty and greasy. It um, it's, it's makes stuff break apart and come apart a little easier, which is nice. Um, but anyway, let's wrap this up. Thanks for watching. If you want to hit that like and subscribe, be great. Scott from Flippin' Customized.